It's week 18 of A Year of Wisdom, and we're one-third of the way through the year. Good job. Let's get to reading. Day 120. Job 41 and 42. Can you draw out Leviathan with a fish hook, or press down its tongue with a cord? Can you put a rope in its nose, or pierce its jaw with a hook? Will it make many supplications to you? Will it speak soft words to you? Will it make a covenant with you to be taken as your servant forever? Will you play with it as a bird, or will you put it on a leash for your girls? Will traders bargain over it? Will they divide it up among the merchants? Can you fill its skin with harpoons or its head with fishing spears? Lay hands on it. Think of the battle. You will not do it again. Any hope of capturing it will be disappointed. Were not even the gods overwhelmed at the sight of it? No one is so fierce as to dare to stir it up. Who can stand before it? Who can confront it and be safe? Under the whole heaven, who? I will not keep silence concerning its limbs, or its mighty strength, or its splendid frame. Who can strip off its outer garment? Who can penetrate its double coat of mail? Who can open the doors of its face? There is terror all around its teeth. Its back is made of shields in rows, shut up closely as with a seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They clasp each other and cannot be separated. Its sneezes flash forth light, and its eyes are like the eyelids of the dawn. From its mouth go flaming torches. Sparks of fire leap out. Out of its nostrils come smoke, as from a boiling pot and burning rushes. Its breath kindles coals, and a flame comes out of its mouth. In its neck abides strength, and terror dances before it. The folds of its flesh cling together. It's firmly cast and immovable. Its heart is as hard as stone, as hard as the lower millstone. When it raises itself up, the gods are afraid. At the crashing, they are beside themselves. Though the sword reaches it, it does not avail. Nor does the spear, the dart, or the javelin. It counts iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make it flee. Sling stones for it are turned to chaff. Clubs are counted as chaff. It laughs at the rattle of javelins. Its underparts are like sharp potsherds. It spreads itself like a threshing sledge in the mire. It makes the deep boil like a pot. It makes the sea like a pot of ointment. It leaves a shining wake behind it. One would think the deep to be white-haired, On earth it has no equal, a creature without fear. It surveys everything that is lofty. It is king over all that are proud. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. After the Lord had spoken these words to Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against you and your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore, take seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for I will accept his prayer, not to deal with you according to your folly. For you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has done. So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and so far the Naamathite, went and did what the Lord had told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house. 
They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Kermima, the second Kizia, and the third Karen Hapuch. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his grandchildren's children four generations, and Job died old and full of days. Proverbs 30 and 31 The words of Agur, son of Jekai, an oracle. Thus says the man, I am weary, O God, I am weary, O God, how can I prevail? Surely I am too stupid to be human. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the Holy Ones, who has ascended to heaven and come down, who has gathered the wind in the hollow of the hand, who has wrapped up the waters in a garment, who has established all the ends of the earth. What is this person's name? And what is the name of the person's child? Surely you know. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words or else he will rebuke you and you will be found a liar. Two things I ask of you. Do not deny them to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that I need or I shall be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I shall be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Do not slander a servant to a master or the servant will curse you and you will be held guilty. There are those who curse their fathers and do not bless their mothers. There are those who are pure in their own eyes, yet are not cleansed of their filthiness. There are those, how lofty are their eyes, how high their eyelids lift. There are those whose teeth are swords, whose teeth are knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, the needy from among mortals. The leech has two daughters. Give, give, they cry. Three things are never satisfied, Four, never say enough. Sheol, the barren womb. The earth ever thirsty for water and fire that never says enough. The eye that mocks a father and scorns to obey a mother will be pecked out by the ravens of the valley and eaten by vultures. Three things are too wonderful for me. Four, I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock, the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with a girl. This is the way of an adulteress. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wrong. Under three things the earth trembles. Under four it cannot bear up. A slave when he becomes king, and a fool when glutted with food. An unloved woman when she gets a husband, and a maid when she succeeds her mistress. Four things on earth are small, yet they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people without strength, yet they provide their food in the summer. The badgers are a people without power, yet they make their homes in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet all of them march in rank. The lizard can be grasped in the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. Three things are stately in their stride, four are stately in their gait. The lion, which is mightiest among wild animals, and does not turn back before any, the strutting rooster, the he-goat, and a king striding before his people. If you've been foolish, exalting yourself, or if you have been devising evil, put your hand on your mouth. For as pressing milk produces curds, and pressing the nose produces blood, so pressing anger produces strife. The words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. No, my son, no son of my womb, no son of my vow. Do not give your strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, or for rulers to desire strong drink, or else they will drink and forget what has been decreed, and will pervert the rights of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to one who is perishing, and wine to those in bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty, and remember their misery no more. 
Speak out for those who cannot speak for the rights of all the destitute. Speak out, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. A capable wife, who can find? She's far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She's like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and she reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the city gates. And, as always, thank you so much for being here today. Make sure to hit that subscribe right there if you haven't already, and click the bell so you get notifications for every reading, and hit the like button too. And I will see you tomorrow for a different translation. Maranatha. Need a big pink neon sign to show me what to do. I thank you, Lord. It glorifies you when you're the only answer. I praise you, Lord, for holding what's too much for me. And I'm amazed by you, Lord, because nothing's too big and nothing's too small to lay at your feet.